Minister, what do you think about selling more Canadian oil to Europe to deal with the Russian problem? Prime Minister's talking about it today. We're doing everything we can to help our European friends and colleagues, clearly. And uh, bref, en français aussi? And on va faire tout ce qu'on peut pour aider nos, nos collègues et amis européens, comme eux, euh, nous croyons qu'il faut s'attaquer, évidemment, à la dépendance au pétrole et au gaz russe, tout en continuant à lutter contre les changements climatiques. Vous avez probablement entendu la, la présidente de l'Union européenne qui a dit essentiellement la meilleure solution à notre dépendance au pétrole et au gaz russe, c'est de réduire notre dépendance au pétrole et au gaz. Point à la ligne. Merci. As I said, and as the, the president of the European Union has said, they want to accelerate the transition to a cleaner economy and a greener future. And we have a number of measures in, in place in Canada and some that are being put in place, like the cap on oil, on oil and gas. So we're, 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 we're tackling emissions. Uh, production, obviously, as you know, is a provincial jurisdiction matter. So we're, our, our role at the federal level is to ensure that, uh, that the emissions are going down, and that's what we're working on. Thank you. Hi, Mrs. Finley. The uh, Ukrainian uh, PM is asking for anti-ship missiles and other things like that. Uh, any opinions on uh, what Canada should or should not give? Or this is all coming out of the NATO meetings. Today. Yes, yes, no, I, I'm aware of it. We think Canada can do more, even though it is doing a lot, and there is no doubt that what Canada is doing is appreciated. But they need real equipment to fight a real war. And it's very personal for an awful lot of Ukrainian Canadians, as we know, 1.3 million of the diaspora here in Canada. So this government, and we're concerned with the new NDP Liberal Coalition government, that they will put defense spending where it needs to be. We need to get up to that 2% on our NATO commitment. We need to spend more on defense and equipment, and we need to give whatever we can do in support right now. So I just ask you, as a former junior defense minister, you had yep. some of your brief time in that job. You did know a bit about the equipment or lack of equipment that we actually have in stock that could move. So do you have any suggestions on that file yes. or not? Uh, we gave some of the suggestions to the minister and committee yesterday. She says she'll take it under advisement. Uh, and we do also have non-lethal equipment we could get over there, like mobile hospitals that were bought for COVID and are unused, sitting in warehouses. There is more we can do, uh, lethal and non-lethal. So we're hoping they will. Thanks. Thank you for stopping. Mr. Scheer, the Prime Minister is speaking about oil exports to Europe. What do you think? Well, it, Justin Trudeau has no credibility on this file. He's the one who's cancelled pipelines here in Canada. He's had a consistent policy of attacking the men and women who work in the oil and gas sector. And had he approved those pipelines, Europe might not be so dependent on Russian energy today. Do you think there's really capacity to get, I mean, you know, moving apart from the Quebec question, they won't allow pipelines through, right? But overall... It's the federal government's job to get pipelines approved in this country. It's the federal government's job to set forth the regulatory uh, process that can actually lead to certainty and lead to projects uh, projects that meet the criteria of moving ahead. And under Justin Trudeau, that has not happened. He's completely failed in that regard. The carbon tax backstop is actually costing people money and it's not revenue neutral according to the parliamentary budget officer. Are you surprised to hear that? Not surprised at all. We knew when Justin Trudeau uh, tried to fool Canadians into thinking that it might be revenue neutral, we knew that wasn't going to happen. We knew it was never his intention to make it revenue neutral. We always knew this was a, a, a cash grab for uh, a, a government whose spending is completely out of control. Now the independent parliamentary budget officer has confirmed that, so we're hoping that Canadians keep that in mind in the next election and understand that carbon taxes do nothing to lower emissions. All they do is take harder money out of the pockets of Canadians. Thank you. Thanks. On the carbon tax. Yeah. Oh, okay. so, it's so with the news out today from the independent parliamentary budget officer, it's quite clear that carbon taxes don't work when it comes to lowering emissions and all it leads to is more money out of the pockets of hardworking Canadians. And that's why I'm very proud to support Pierre Polio in the leadership of the Conservative Party of Canada. He, is, he has always been clear and consistent. And I'm proud to support a candidate like Pierre who is committed to scrapping the carbon tax. I think it's very important for our members that they have an option in this race and Pierre is that option to cancel the carbon tax.
Thank you. Thanks. Um, I think it's very disappointing that this government has made the attempt to destroy the natural resources sector for the last seven years, and now this war happens in Ukraine. We see the necessity of ethically produced oil and gas all around the world, but guess what? Trudeau and his government destroyed the entire sector, and now we need output, now we need workers, and we don't have either because of their actions. We are paying the price for this now. So they can start now, but they should have thought of this seven years ago. Thank you. Mr. Manager Tino, got a question for you about big tech and alleged people who have done crimes. The police, uh, CBC is doing something about sexual predators who have been accused by police of their crimes, but the police can't get into the Apple software because the encryption is too strong. Do you think there should be something for the security services and police be able to, to be able to get into technology when they charge someone? Well, uh, of course, let me just say at the outset uh, that it's important that law enforcement have all of the tools that they need uh, to um, investigate a crime. Uh, I've just gotten back from Washington, D.C., where um, we relaunched the cross-border crime forum uh, with the United States. Um, myself and Secretary Mayorkas, along with Minister Lametti and um, Attorney General um, Merrick Garland, talked about a wider range of issues, including uh, cyber security and, and cyber hacks. So um, we're always prepared to innovate uh, when it comes to uh, ensuring that there's uh, the appropriate uh, toolbox there for law enforcement to do their job, while at the same time uh, ensuring uh, that uh, folks' charter rights are, are respected. So there's, there's no way of pushing Apple, Google, the other smartphone makers to, to, find a, to have a backdoor if a court order would allow it? Well, I think that last part of your question is incredibly important. Um, look, we have mechanisms already within the criminal code that allow the police to apply to the court. Uh, for example, uh, search warrants, um, where um, judges take a look at um, the information to support it, um, uh, an ongoing investigation, including looking into uh, digital devices. Uh, and they strike that balance, but they do it um, on an independent basis and they do it in a way that is separate and apart from the function of the elected government, uh, whose job it is to make sure that the tools exist. Uh, the final thing I'd ask is the burden of proof to get the court order to have it opened if you suspect it, but if you can't prove that it exists and you go to the judge to ask for it, you may, right. you may fail. You, as a former Crown, you, you know what I'm talking about I am about familiar here. with the concept, yeah. I mean, there's different legal thresholds, so, so reasonable grounds, reasonable basis. I mean, all of this is about um, understanding where there is a credible base probability that the thing that you are searching or the place that you are searching or the person that you are searching uh, will yield uh, evidence of a potential crime that is listed under the criminal code. Again, I just emphasize that it is the court's job to undertake uh, that analysis, uh, to do the appropriate weighing on the state's interest uh, to investigate and carry out that search warrant uh, in conjunction with um, people's individual charter rights. Thanks Thank very you, much. Mr. Chief, to follow quickly on the uh, Public Safety Committee, did your office ever receive any intelligence talking about the presence of uh, shotguns or other firearms being in vehicles involved in the convoy? Well, look, uh, throughout um, the, uh, the, illegal, uh, the illegal occupation uh, here in Ottawa and indeed uh, with uh, the illegal blockades across the country, um, we gave law enforcement all of the tools that they needed when existing authorities um, did not work. We resorted to uh, the Emergencies Act to ensure that they had uh, the additional um, authorities to, uh, to bring about the, the, uh, the, the resolution of the blockades. Um, you did see, for example, in Coots, Alberta, uh, that there were a number of uh, serious criminal offenses uh, laid in respect of firearms. And as to um, you know, the presence of firearms um, elsewhere across the country. I mean, those are questions which are best put to uh, police. Thanks very much. You know me, uh, Bob, I've spoke to the CEO a number of times. Uh, we're looking at potential solution. Um, you know, our aim when we had the pandemic, you know, when the World Health Organization declared pandemic was March 11, 2020, we wanted to make sure we invest in all families of vaccines. Uh, the one that is done by Medicago is plan based which is very promising. That's why it was approved by Health Canada. So uh, we are going to be working with the company. I've been in touch with them already on a number of times to try to find a solution uh, because we want that vaccine to be available for the world. 
Uh, this is a company in which we have invested and we want the company to be successful because I think Canada can play a role in global health and certainly Medicago um, with a plant-based vaccine, I think it's very interesting. You know, we've attracted Novavax, we've attracted Moderna. One is mRNA, the other one is uh, um, another technology, but certainly the one of Medicago in plant-based uh, is very interesting. But, so but the fact is that they had us, <laughs> Philip Morris as a, a partner in this, and this is why the WHO was rejecting them. Yeah, but you know, to, to every challenge, there's a solution. You've but, seen me before. Yeah. There'll, there'll be a solution. So are you, but why did we agree to do a vaccine with a company that Well, because tobacco? we, because we wanted to, well, it's not that we chose to do a, a vaccine with, with a company like that. We chose to invest in a company which had a plant-based vaccine, which was recommended by the experts as the one, the most promising. And you have to go, you know, to go back two years ago, uh, what we wanted to make sure to protect the health and safety of Canadians because no one knew at the time. Now people are looking at mRNA, but go back two years ago. When this started, you wanted to make sure that you were invested in all families of vaccine. Uh, you know, Novavax with particle subunit, with Moderna and Pfizer with mRNA. And certainly Medicago was seen, if you go back two years ago, if you look at the record, um, people were seeing that as a very promising technology, still today. That's why it was approved by Health Canada. So the shareholding uh, of the company is something that uh, we're going to try to, to, to work with the company to find a solution because I think... In other uh, words, to ask mm. Philip Morris to this and that. Well, that would be for the company to see, but, but uh, you've seen me before. We'll find a solution. So, but the only solution has to be to get... Well, the Philip company, Morris the is, company is, 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 is obviously looking at that and uh, we certainly want to be uh, them to be successful because, like I said, uh, we want to play a role in global health and, and having a vaccine, a plant-based vaccine, if you talk to the experts, uh, that's also a technology you want to have in your portfolio of technology because it's not only about addressing the current crisis, uh, this is about, you know, we didn't choose the time of this crisis, we're not going to choose the time of the second one, but what we can choose is to make sure we are best prepared to protect the health and safety of Canadians and, and having a plant-based vaccine here in domestic in Canada is part of that yeah, but Did anybody think, oh my God, like we've got a tobacco company invested in this? When well, we the, the company, I mean, this is, there's many shareholders in that company. Uh, so in, in a sense, but, but what I'm saying is that you want to make sure you have a plant-based vaccine. Medicago has the plant-based vaccine. And that's why I think that if you look at the families of vaccines, you'd rather be invested in, in, in the in the various family of vaccines to make sure that not only for COVID-19, but whatever may come next, maybe next time a plant-based vaccine will be the better solution to protect the health and safety. And having that capabilities in Canada, I think is, is helping for that. With respect to shareholding, there'll they'll, they'll be solutions. The company is aware and they're working on that. They're working on the vaccine. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Merci, merci tout le monde. Hey, ça va, ça va, ça va. Quelqu'un qui a pas reçu de réponse encore, ça fait trois semaines qu'on talonne le gouvernement. Euh, sur euh, l'idée de la passerelle aérienne, il me semble que ce n'est pas compliqué. Ça s'est déjà fait dans le passé. On pense à l'opération Parasol euh, lors de la, de la guerre euh, au Kosovo. Euh, puis présentement, on est capable d'analyser un avion sans problème pour envoyer le premier ministre en Europe. Donc, euh, si je regarde ça, bien, euh, la seule chose qu'on est capa capable de faire circuler présentement entre le Canada et l'Europe de l'Est, c'est le premier ministre assez in invraisemblable, alors qu'il y a des Ukrainiens qui sont pris dans des camps de réfugiés qui n'ont pas nécessairement les moyens euh, de payer pour s'en venir ici mais qui peuvent, on nous dit, obtenir plus facilement leur visa. C'est une chose d'obtenir les visas, c'est une chose de les accueillir ici. S'ils ne sont pas capables de s'en venir ici, ça aura donné quoi, tout ça? Donc, à un moment donné, l'idée, elle est bonne. Là, on nous dit qu'on parle aux compagnies aériennes. À un moment donné, ces compagnies-là aériennes, ils ont déjà levé la main pour dire « on est prêt, Air Transat le fait ». Les autres compagnies aériennes, bien, ils sont encore en vie aujourd'hui grâce euh, aux milliards de dollars qu'ils ont reçus pendant la pandémie. Je pense que c'est facile pour le ministre de leur demander de faire leur part. Je suis un peu déçu. Ils se parlent, ça fait trois semaines qu'ils se parlent. On peut-tu annoncer un deal pour rassurer les gens? Le problème, là, c'est qu'il y a présentement des gens en Ukraine, euh, en Pologne surtout, euh, dans les pays limitrophes, en Moldavie, euh, en Hongrie, en Slovaquie, qui sont pris dans les camps de réfugiés, qui ne savent pas comment ils vont s'en venir ici. Ils savent maintenant comment obtenir un visa, mais ils ne savent pas s'ils vont pouvoir venir ici parce qu'ils n'auront pas de façon de, de voyager et de se transporter jusqu'ici. Donc, c'est-tu possible de les rassurer et de dire « on a un deal ». C'est pas compliqué, me semble. C'est tout ce qu'on demande au ministre. On n'est pas capable d'avoir la réponse. Est-ce que vous concevez, un peu ce que disait le, le secrétaire parlementaire de la longue minute, qu'il y a des questions logistiques à régler avant d'annoncer qu'on a dit? Annonçons le deal. Là. Dites, ça va être correct. 
On va vous accompagner là-dedans. Il, il va y avoir un deal avec les compagnies aériennes pour les détails. Bien entendu que ça se réglera au fur et à mesure. Voyons non, c'est évident. On ne sait pas exactement encore combien de personnes vont avoir obtenu leur visa puis où. Mais on a juste à dire qu'on a un deal. Ces personnes-là vont être rassurées, vont savoir qu'ils vont pouvoir s'en venir. Puis en plus, on peut en profiter pour amener le, le, le problème présentement, c'est qu'il y a beaucoup de dons. À Montréal seulement, il y a 40 tonnes de dons qui ne sont pas capables d'être envoyés en Ukraine. Si on met en, en place une passerelle aérienne, ça vient aller-retour, un avion, là. On peut, on peut envoyer du stock là-bas puis revenir avec des gens. Puis en plus, ça va faciliter l'accueil des gens parce que quand ils vont arriver tous ensemble, au lieu d'arriver deux, trois familles par vol, puis qu'il va y avoir un vol qui va arriver avec 300 personnes, 400 personnes, ça va être beaucoup plus facile à ce moment-là de les accueillir parce que euh, tout de suite, il va y avoir des ressources sur place qui vont pouvoir les cibler puis les diriger vers le bon endroit. Donc, il me semble que c'est juste le gros bon sens. Il faudrait que le ministre se grouille là-dessus. Ça fait trois semaines que je lui parle, je suis en mode collaboration, mais à un moment donné, la, co la collaboration, ça va dans les deux sens. Le programme est en place euh, depuis la semaine passée. Ils nous ont dit que ça prendrait deux semaines. Oui. J'imagine que la semaine prochaine. Bien là. Logiquement, là, ce que ça veut dire, c'est que jeudi prochain, les premiers visas vont être émis en masse. Là, ça donne une semaine là, au gouvernement pour, analyser, pour mettre en place cette passerelle aérienne-là, en analysant des avions commerciaux. Une semaine. Il faut qu'ils s'y mettent tout de suite. Puis on attend, on attend les réponses du ministre. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Oui. Je n'ai pas compris. Excuse-moi. Je pense que c'est un Je pense que c'est un commentaire sur les pays de l'Union européenne. Je pense que nous ne devons pas utiliser une guerre pour augmenter l'oil Merci beaucoup. Merci. Merci.